So this city fix is answering the question, can you get your cities that you've already built and you've loved working in the new economy 2.0 patch, which changes everything? What is before us is an epic journey that took over eight hours, lots of stress, lots of tea. Let's dive in. So we're going to take a look at our current modded city of New Bruberg, examine each of these major changes, because I think this is going to be a process to get your cities balanced and working in the sense of you might be able to load them, but is the city still going to be profitable and playable? Um, New Bruberg does use a small collection of mods. Let's just take a look at that. Yeah, it does use a small collection of mods, but I've had to remove most of them because they're not updated. I think the one that we're waiting for at the moment is Prop the Growables. I have a pre-release version, so you should be okay by the time you get to uh, testing out this tomorrow. So I've got a local version of that. And also the extra detailing stuff hasn't been updated yet, but I'm pretty sure that will be by the time it gets to you. So basically, I'm running 100% vanilla, vanilla, but with only Plop the Growables. So let's see how we go with that. So the first things that you might notice is a huge drop in the amount of money you've got. Fortunately, we're actually still making a bit of money, although we are getting a fluctuation in our population. Let's just pause a minute and have a look, because one of the big changes are the costs of upkeep in map tiles. So if you've used a mod to unlock all of the map tiles in your game, or you've just worked through with unlimited money and then switched back to paying for things, you're going to have a bit of a problem. If we have a look in our economy tab, we can see a tile upkeep. Now, this is a cost that I would not have had before, but that is a regular ongoing monthly upkeep that this city has got of minus 427,277. Now, there's a couple of things you can do to mitigate that. So when you are first loading up your save, if you go into map options, you can unlock all map tiles. And if you do that, it will disable the map tile upkeep cost. So if that has made your save just not work at all monetarily, then that is an option for you. Of course, you can also play with unlimited money, which is, might be something you, you don't want to do. But maybe you could use that for a little while, get your city balanced out and then turn it off again afterwards. So looking at our milestones, now at milestone one, you have access to the city budget and taxation rather than waiting a couple of milestones later. And in the second unlock milestone small village, you have access to the production panel. So already you're able to start making changes to your city. With that information in mind was the rest of that sentence. I knew there was some more information there. And um, also the service trade has now been changed. So before we dive into there, let's have a look at the policy policies that we have for our city and we've got this new one here import city services so this is everything apart from electricity and water we can see on the side it says that includes police healthcare, death care garbage management and fire and rescue services now these costs are based on the city's population so as you grow they will cost more so if we have a look in our economy panel over here under our budget we have this service trade and over here on the side, we can see that I am importing electricity because the way the game used to work, that was just the cheapest way to do it. I've always done that. That is now a cost of minus 156, nearly 157,000. Plus that and my tile upkeep, I'm suddenly down over half a million a month uh, without anything else going on. But as you can see, I'm not importing any water, so exporting sewage, and I'm not using any external services. So I don't have a cost with that. Um, let's just maybe tick that button there we go boink and just see do i have to unpause the game oh my goodness me even without okay click on there even without unpausing the game that is another minus <laughs> let me just add that up that's another 1.3 million minus bringing the total that i would be losing a month to 2 million if i left that one on which I'm not going to do because I've not needed it so far. So we will turn that one off and hopefully <laughs> it's all come back to normal. So it's just the tile upkeep and the importing electricity. Oh, of course, government subsidies, they've been removed as well. So we would have had that up here, I think, and that would have balanced things out without us seeing it behind the scenes. Nope, not anymore. Well, OK, so that is something that we've got to take on board as our city continues. What about a change in the way the industries, the population and demands in the game. 
Well, let's just leave the city running for a couple of minutes while I'm just talking about some of the different changes. So now with the demand meter down here, I mean, your demand meter may be entirely not what you're expecting. Here we go. We're seeing some changes happening already on these. So residential demand now depends on household wealth and family size. Households will, things are breaking, households will spawn based on average citizen happiness, homelessness, tax, available student positions and available jobs. Commercial companies will spawn based on household needs, reducing how often the same companies appear in the city, which will be fantastic. I don't know why all these houses are... Let's just pause a second and just have a look at what information we're getting here. So these are being condemned. So, yeah, this is one of the things that might happen. People are going to suddenly move out. Houses will be condemned. Does it give us any other information? It doesn't. But as we probably, if you have eagle eyes, you spotted this one was condemned and then it started to rebuild again. Uh, what else are we getting condemned over here? So other residential houses, these big residential blocks. I mean, these are probably, they still got a lot of households in them, but their income, average wealth is poor, wretched, poor. What's this one over here? Poor. Oh man, so this is going to be start of the balancing period. And unfortunately, if these get condemned without Plop the Globals, they are going to just disappear, aren't they? So, yeah, we'll see what happens with that. Okay, let's keep that going. And <laughs> let's keep a little view over our city here as it's running. Uh, commercial and industrial demand has been adjusted to avoid the not enough customers complaint and taxes now have more effect on demand. So that was one of the things that I spoke a lot about was uh, adjusting the tax rates in this one here. This is what I'm looking for in our industries for these different items really didn't seem to make any difference at all to anything. So I will give that a bit of a test as we move along. Let's have a look here. I mean, everything's making money here, which is good. And overall, our budget, well, it was in a plus before. It's in a minus now. But that's probably because of all these houses that are condemned. Maybe let's stick that on speed three and we can keep an eye on that. I mean, they're popping up. They're going down. We're getting some upgrades. Yeah, this one down here. These are rebuilding over here. Okay, not too bad. So now workers from outside connections no longer pay tax, uh, which is a big thing. So we really want to make sure that we've got people inside the cities doing our jobs if we want to get a tax rate from them. There we go. All those buildings have just disappeared. I don't think they're going to come back because we didn't actually zone those in. And we're just going to let this run a little bit again. We can see our population dropping down. We've got the same tile upkeep. We've got the same uh, minor service trade cost. Um, our production is pretty flat lined at the moment. I haven't adjusted the tax rates. I don't have any loans. Um, all of this, I really haven't adjusted budgets or service fees on anything. It's all just flat as it is. So we're going to see how this goes now. And that might be make a difference as to some of these buildings disappearing but what i'm hoping to see is a lot of these high rent ones where so they're just basically wretched wealth these ones where you get just like one child in a building ah here we go what have we got so we've got a senior who isn't working retired and then we've got a child who's a student so they would hopefully move to other options right let's keep things running and see how it goes I've literally just seen in the Pat's notes, households without adults will now move away. Brilliant. So that, that solves that problem. Now, what I want to keep an eye on is with my population, the unemployment. So unemployment is shooting up. And that's going to be another big change with the way the game works. So keep an eye on that unemployment rate. We know we, we mentioned that we that workers from outside connections no longer pay tech. Uh, tax workers from outside connections are not included in population or workplace info which is good yes because we don't, we don't you know obviously we don't care about the unemployment <laughs> that's not in our city no offense for everybody else uh, workplaces and outside connections are less desirable than workplaces in the city so that means that your population is more likely to want to work in your city which is good our population's rising our money is still dropping we've got minus fourteen thousand. okay well that's not too bad is it um let's just look at the happiness rate what are they most unhappy about polluted water polluted water where the heck's that oh yes we've got that over here 
which is getting a little bit polluted. Um, where is our, it's this one here, isn't it, everybody? Let's just pop that over there instead. Hopefully that is still enough water and it's not polluted. Let's just have a check. Yep, yeah, that's okay. And I'm guessing it'll take... Oh, yeah, there we go. That's fine. Mail service, we don't have any. Internet, we don't have any. Healthcare coverage, well, it is what it is. We're not going to be changing that. But other than that, abundance of entertainment, spacious homes, fair taxes is a plus one. Well, I'm just wondering whether we could slightly adjust that because they're happy with the tax. 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 To me, that's saying my taxes are too low <laughs> if everybody's happy with the tax. So I'm just wondering whether we could get rid of a little bit of our deficit by just bopping these up a little bit, even a percentage, and see whether that makes a difference and whether some if everybody's suddenly unhappy with the tax. No, we've lost the plus one. So now we're at zero with tax happiness. So if I do this, am I going to get a minus one? For tax, yes. A minus one for high taxes. So 10%, at least on residential, seems to be the mid-ground at the moment with the size of the city that I've got. We're still losing money. And as we've mentioned, most of that is going to be because of my tiles. We're also getting a lot of healthcare issues around here. Okay. So we know we do have over here somewhere. Let's have a look in this menu instead. Oh, and we've lost the GUI again. Darn it. It's like every time I click on a menu option. Pants. Okay, something else to keep in mind, which i totally forgotten about. Thank you very much to Konzi on the Discord for helping me out with this one. Um, I actually had a Paradox Mod playset enabled as well, which I didn't realise because I'm always using Skive in the background. So I've got my initial playset here, I've called it, with zero mods in altogether. But I do have a pre-release version of Plop the Growables, which you will have the release version now, so that's fine. So I've got that in my local folder that has been picked up. Uh, it does mean that in this test I'm going to lose all of my assets and stuff that I've manually placed in the game, but that's not the that's not the uh, in the remit of this testing. Uh, let's go pre seven. Here we go. We just want to get everything working and see how the city fares. Okay, we're back to September. I've got the tax rates like it was. People are moving back in again. We're still losing money. We don't have so many waiting for a hearse this time, although we do have over here. Let's just take a very quick look at what we've got going on. Um, oh, so we're zooming over here. We've got our crematorium. So nine out of ten vehicles in use. It might just be that we just need to upgrade that and add a hearse garage on, which is going to mess up some of the other items that I've placed here, of course, because I didn't build this with thought to room. And ah, this will lead us to another update in the game. I want to get rid of that elementary school playground because it's in the way of upgrading my crematorium. Before, we couldn't do that. Now, if we have a look at our school option, we should be able to scroll down and see all of the upgrades that have been added to our building. So we've got the school extension wing, which is built into the game. We can select it, deactivate it or delete it. And then we've got the sub buildings, the playground and the children's clinic over here. So I want to get the school playground. Um, I want to try and relocate it first of all. And now it's given me that option. So I might want to put that down there. And you might notice as well, we now have an area of effect where that can be placed. So what we're going to do is delete it instead. Yep, now it's gone. Excellent. Well, that solved that problem. Now we can add a hearse garage. And again, we can do this. We can add this wherever we like. I'm just going to add it on the back of the building as that's the easiest thing. And that will give us now 15 hearses that are going to go out. For some reason, that's saying it's got no car access. Also worth mentioning with the sub buildings, you can use your normal bulldozer to remove them. Uh, keep in mind, I've used Anarchy Mod to build a lot of things here. So these sort of paths overlapping like that would stop that from being removed. There we go. But we can individually do that without going into the GUI, which is also, I'll pop that back, very handy too. But hopefully those extra hearses now will be going out. Let's just click on here. There they all go. If we do it this way, we don't get all the menus. Excellent. Yeah, and we'll see what happens with that. 
interesting just to see over this side of the city we no longer have the rent too high issues and all those houses that had individuals living there on their own that were either retired and couldn't work or were children and couldn't pay the rent they've all gone which is great they've all moved out gone somewhere else and we no longer have those problems anymore and you're so shocked you just drove off the road didn't you please don't do that so if you've had a rather elderly population as you're going into this new economy rework of the game, you might go through this sort of death wave. But overall, plenty more people are moving in. So yeah, this city is doing okay so far, which is excellent. We just need to get the money situation in hand and also get our citizens a little bit happier too. Okay, so something I would like to test. We have some industrial demand and we have now been told... Oh, we just passed 10,000. Excellent. We've now been told that our taxation can affect which different buildings appear in here. So we have a look at our production and just maybe have a look at something that we do need a lot of. We've got oil. Here we go. Something like this one here. Convenience food. We have a huge demand for convenience food. So I'm going to go into my industrial tax rate. We're going to scroll down this food, convenience food. There we go. I am going to subsidize convenience food. So first of all, we're going to get the buildings building. And once they're done, then the companies are going to decide if they're going to move in or not. Let's see what happens. Well, we've hit big town. So that is good. Things are going nicely. We've got some properties uh, I've been filling up here. Okay, let's just take a look at what we've got. So starting from the left here. Let's have a look. Do we have convenience food? The very first one we click on. Excellent. Uh, then we have timber and paper. We are going to have other needs as well, so we're not going to be too worried about that. Uh, petrochemicals, another convenience food. Excellent. Electronics, textiles, metals, machinery, minerals. Convenience food, that's three out of all of these. Timber, we haven't really seen many. We've had two timbers, I think. Not many that have doubled up concrete furniture and just straight up food okay maybe let's just delete all of these here because that one was convenience food on the end and see what comes back this time okay everybody's back so we've got that one convenient i deleted all the ones on the other side that weren't convenience food as well and we may have got yeah another couple so that's two so far on that side uh not those ones and this one was one wasn't it yeah so three four okay interesting so out of all of that we've got four well i suppose the actual test then would be if we made our taxation super high on absolutely everything but drop convenience food down to nothing so everybody else is being decentivized to come in apart from convenience food to do a fair test we'll just remove everybody there we go and we'll get them all to zone in again Okay, that's very interesting. So I've left it just a little while and we're not getting other businesses move in. So that is good because that tells me that setting our tax rates at 30% uh, for everything apart from convenience food is actually discouraging people to move in. And some of the businesses we did have here have moved out. It hasn't become viable for them to stay. And they will also now move out of the city whereas before they would have looked for somewhere else to to go uh, which would just called all sorts of issues but now they would just go which is great so i'm liking that so that is you know i'm making the change and it is actually doing something which is good so if we pop that back to we had that on 11 percent before didn't we and we'll put that down to minus 10 hopefully in short order we'll get these businesses filled up again yeah and there we go as expected everybody's moved in we've got a nice selection of services in here now that we've adjusted the tax rates again okay i like that change right looking at the city overall the situation with the hearses has gone down let's just have a look at our unemployment 6.7 percent i mean it's not terrible our citizen age we've got a lot of adults i'm expecting that at some point we are going to have a little bit of a death wave again but we're okay moved in moved away that's a figure that i can deal with excellent we've got enough jobs so hopefully we'll get some of those people educated and that will help the thing i'd like to try and work on now is the the money that we're losing which i think most of that is going to be from our service trade over here importing electricity three hundred and forty six thousand a month so how much electricity do we need and what would that cost us to make it ourselves 
Well, let's see. Let's disconnect our transformer that's here. Or perhaps we could just turn that thing off. There we go. So we're no longer bringing in any electricity. Hopefully that has adjusted the service trade. Still minus 346,000, even though everybody's got no electricity. Okay, maybe we just actually need to delete that connection. Yep. Oh, overlapping items, overlapping items. There we go. We'll delete that one there. Don't forget, again, I did a lot of stuff with Anarchy. So, yeah. Your mileage may vary with that. Importing electricity. Still hunt 350. Now, that is interesting. Why is that? Is this the only place that I've got it coming in? So we've got our line coming in here. Is it because it's connected over there, which is outside the city limits? And that is something that was added to the map. Uh, we've also got this connection here that goes straight across to over here mm, maybe that's the problem well let's actually make some electricity first um, to try and help deal with this so we've got our we can use our coal generators let's maybe just run a road out here to put those on okay so these are going to make 20 megawatts each i believe yeah low and high voltage 5004 okay we'll just plot one of those down so the cost of this can change depending on what we're doing. So we need one of those. We need a transformer station. Let's just pop that down over there. And then we're going to connect that one up from there to there. Excellent. So let's just see what we're going to be making. First of all, 20, which obviously isn't enough. Um, we can adjust. Oh, the service trade has dropped. Excellent. I'm really hoping it's not going to count things outside of the area if you know just because you're connected because that would really scupper a lot of map makers but yeah let's let's see how this goes okay so we're making 20 so what do i do here now do i just up the amount that we're making and do it that way so i've up this to 150 percent which affects the output levels of the power plant um i'm not going to bother with the service fee at the moment so that really hasn't given us enough so if I plop another one of these in over here as well, and then we'll get that connected up. There we go. Let's see what that gets us up to. Hopefully enough. Yeah, that's good. So I could probably just drop this back down again and find uh, a point where everybody is happy. Let's try 120%. Actually, 100% just about gives us enough. That's covering all of the city. Excellent. So that's made our switch over from exporting to making our own. And there we go. Our service trade has just dropped down to zero, which is exactly what we want to see. So overall, instead, that is costing us. Well, before it was minus three, four, six or something like that, which you might immediately think, oh, my goodness, me, it's costing us more. But actually, we're getting some fees in which we can make a difference to. So this figure sort of jumping around a bit, but I worked it out at basically 284,000 minus something like that maybe a little bit more we could up our fees and get some of that adjusted so now we've actually got a reason to jump in here and play with these things to make stuff yeah work the way that we want it to work and the way we expect it to work excellent okay so what is going on here we're still losing a lot of money what are you complaining about over there garbage is piling up oh now that is something else is we had external services didn't we for things like garbage and stuff like that we haven't got anything in our city okay we're just going to pop that down here and just oh, pop in a very very basic okay garbage capacity thing there we go so that now is going to cost us 41 48 62 good grief that's going to cost us some money a month wow i tell you what you know getting your city to balance is gonna be is gonna be tough so there's a lot of wealth going on there's not a lot of complaining if people aren't complaining about taxes taxes are going up we're gonna up those a couple we're gonna put our industry back all to what it was before and up that to 12 we're gonna up commercial as well we don't have much of a need for those at the moment and see if we can get this to balance out without everybody leaving our city. We've got a minus two on high taxes, but we've got a plus six on abundance of entertainment. So that's good. Now we're only down to a minus sort of 4,000 odd. Now I'm wondering what other services we don't have because I've been getting them all from the outside. So we've definitely got 
health care and death care which is good we've definitely got garbage because we've just dropped that in we've definitely got all of our schools covered although we could do with a bit more capacity that is fine fire yeah oh for a minute there i thought we didn't have that covered but we do police we've also got that covered as well excellent got a lot of parks and stuff going on we've got a lot of buses going on so now i'm starting to think about balancing the amount of buses and the cost that that is going to be each month so i'm actually really liking the way that this is working so expenses what is our, our service upkeeps are basically our biggest expenses at the moment so we've up the service fee on some of these i'm going to up that a little bit more we're going to up this one as well Healthcare and death. I think that's the only one. I mean, we've obviously got the upkeeps for these, but they're the only ones that we can actually adjust. And then sort of see how that makes a difference. I mean, it is a monthly balance is is teetering, it's tottering. I never understood why that figure is different from this figure. Oh, that's the current trend. Okay. So something we have unlocked is some high density housing. I'm thinking I'm just gonna zone some of those at the back. And maybe just dot a couple more around the place as well. Just to give people options if they need to move somewhere. Oh, we've got an overload on our electrical cables over here. I can just easily sort that out. There we go. Everybody's happy again. I've put a transformer station over there connected up uh, a low voltage cable through here. So it wasn't all just running through that one. And also had to up my water and sewerage intake as well, as that was a bit of an issue. But I think that has solved that, which is good. I'm assuming our landfill garbage collection, yeah, they're going out on the way. So that is everything we've mm, got to sort of cover in the city. People are moving out. Our money is still going down. So this is definitely going to be more of a challenge which is good to see. Let's do a little bit of zoning, see if we can get this thing to balance out. So we've got a medium density demand and a low density demand. I think we're going to go for some of these medium density houses. And some of these rows don't have zoning on. That was because I was using mods uh, before to do that. So I'm just going to fill in some of these gaps. Now, after this video, I'm also going to have to do this all again with the city in the state that it is in after the next episode because I've done a load of stuff in the city. <laughs> so I'll probably end up doing that off camera to get things working again. But I think overall, I think overall, we're not that far off, which is good. Yeah, we're not really keeping up with our power needs. I think we're going to unlock a gas power plant instead so instead of 20 megawatts that gives us 250 megawatts possibly at a better price ratio than what we've got going on at the minute so i'm going to replace these maybe should have done that straight away but never mind let's make ourselves some space let's maybe grab ourselves another square so we can see how that's going to work so that is going to be tile upkeep cost 109,221. yep i'm going to take both of those there we go that's hooked up going around the city hopefully we're going to be making a lot of electricity now so i can pop this down to i mean what do we reckon 80 percent okay gone to 50 percent we've got a nice little extra for yeah expansion and that sort of thing which will hopefully then get all our sewage facilities still overloaded so maybe we need to upgrade these as well bit of messing with the lands there we go not in water anymore excellent so we've got four of those let's just see if that is enough almost so i think those four with an increase in our budget over here let's do 126 percent hopefully we'll take care of it yep looks like we're almost there and everybody's happy good 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 our happiness is going up now that we've i've popped around we've got like a post uh, sorting office or post office there and post boxes all over the place oh man so now it's now it's the the hard wait to see whether our city is going to balance out and make enough money and this is what you could be facing in your cities are we going to make it so what followed was basically an epic seven or eight hour fix of new brewberg i tried everything the money just kept on dropping and dropping eventually we had huge traffic problems because of all the new people moving in i mean that is to be expected that's what happens 
then we got huge trash problems and i was thinking well what the heck we're going to do to fix this and because of the way the economy's changed in the background which affects people going to school we had a humongous school demand which i couldn't fulfill because i had no money with the money still going down, I then upped the taxes of everything apart from residential because I wanted people to move in still, and I hoped that would fix it. No, that didn't work. So then I tried exporting the electricity because we were making so much, but that was a trifling amount of money. It really didn't do anything. Service fees were just atrocious. They were going up and up and up. And all this time, all I could think of was that the tile upkeep was way too high. And I really hadn't unlocked that many extra tiles apart from what I'd built on. I tried the car parks at maximum fees. Um, then we got a huge mass unemployment wave, 69, 70%. Huge health problems and another death wave. And now we were down to minus 2 million in the bank and it was getting worse. Then I noticed that the landfill cost was off the charts. It was costing me upwards of almost 500,000 a month. So that had to go. We're down to minus 3 million. I worked out that the maximum loan that I could take, plus the increase that you get when you go up a level, was just not enough. I couldn't get out of this hole, whatever I did. And then we still had trash problems. Um, so then we got to Great Town. I took the maximum loan. It wasn't enough, but it just gave me some money so I could buy a landfill to deal with the trash problems because trying to get them in using the outside services was just a ridiculous fee to do that. And then I basically found that the only way of solving this problem was to use the unlock all tiles option, which would give you all tiles for free. That is the only vanilla solution to get your cities working with the economy 2.0 patch but there is something else you can try if you're happy to use one mod and that is the 529 tile mod by algonon you can unlock all the tiles that's how it comes uh, first of all tile upkeep costs on that which you can adjust over here i'm going to select provide extra tiles at the final milestone so we can do that in new Bruburg. Uh, you can select your initial starting tiles if you lock them all relock all tiles and then you get to select the first few and pay for them again you, you can choose but this here i mean i'm going to try this down at like i don't know 30 percent upkeep something like that and see how that goes let's dive into new Bruburg. okay here we are in the pre-7 episode 7 save that we know and love that we've oh man i've spent so many hours i've literally spent eight hours trying to get this to work so we're still going to get the changes in the background to the people the education all that sort of thing but the main crippling tile upkeep instead of being 450 500 000, whatever it was is now a manageable 128,000. of course you can adjust that you can even set it to zero like the old-fashioned way if you so wish and these are much more manageable instead of this being way up here and that being way down there i'm pretty sure with the help of this mod we can keep on top of our costs and of course when you buy new ones they still have a cost involved and then an upkeep which you can adjust oh goodness me so what are my thoughts finally about the economy 2.0 patch well despite the fact that trying to get a pre-economy 2.0 patch city working being a complete nightmare because the tile upkeep cost i have to say is way too high i'm glad that we do have a mod that can help with that um so i think it's a your mileage may vary um i i haven't actually tried a brand new city with this patch yet i've only tried to fix new Bruburg. And from my understanding, others that have played the game, it does make it harder when starting the new city, which is good. More of a challenge. I'm happy with that. I like a lot of the ideas of the balancing they've done. I like the fact that you can make changes in the game and it actually affects what you're doing. You know, you're making changes and it's doing stuff. I want my changes to mean something. And we've seen that that is possible. Um, I will later on, maybe today, maybe another day, uh, do a live stream of starting a brand new city with this patch so we can see how that works. But at least this way you know how to fix your cities. <laughs> Those winky wonky cars are still there. Fix your cities and get them going in this patch, even if it means using a mod. But that is available, of course, on PDX mods to all PC users. I'm thinking that they are going to adjust the tile upkeep before it gets to console. So... I honestly think maybe you don't have to worry about that when that appears. Let's hope so. What do you reckon? Leave your comments below. I know a lot of you are going to be rolling your eyes thinking, oh, it's the modders fixing things again. But there's, you won't believe 
well you will believe because you might have seen it now the list of fixes that go along with this patch are just unbelievable uh, that's why you won't believe them uh, there's so many there's so many um so the the modders colossal orders i should say the devs not the modders have been working super hard to get the game to where we want it to be and where they want it to be so i think we should remember that as well right everybody's doing u-turns in the road i think we'll end that video there thank you very much for watching check out the next one on the screen i will see you all soon have a great day Bye bye